Hey y'all, this is Regina at Regina's Baking Academy. I am so happy and excited to be part of the Vlogmas 2020 community. I was trying to get in my day five video earlier today. Technically, um, for me, this would be day six. So I'm gonna do two Vlogmas today. And I'm going to be baking cookies over the next day so tonight i'm prepping my lemon crunch cookies and then tomorrow i'm prepping my ginger cookies and my oatmeal raisin cookies because i'm going to put them in the mail on wednesday and i'm praying that they get to my dad and um, miss gladys um, not too long after Christmas, but I'm going to pack them really well. So today, guys, we're going to do a quick recipe for um, lemon crunch cookies. So here's the deal. When you're baking, when you're in the kitchen, if it's your first time or if you haven't been in the kitchen for a while, um, you want to bring your recipes with you. So you make sure that you have all of your ingredients you right now i'm not baking i'm prepping so i'm actually going to do the recipe tonight and you guys are going to get to share with me how i make them from scratch okay so today guys in virginia's baking academy where we get to learn that baking is cool right but baking is also a little bit of work hold on for one second i'm going to be right back I gotta go handle some communication issues. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Hi guys, I'm back. Okay. Just had to lower the volume a little bit. Because it's after the game. And I don't think the Lakers won. And they're having a heated discussion. And it's interrupting our conversation. So we don't want to do that, okay? Okay. So, one of the things I always say <clears throat> is to have your preparation, your meat supplies. Meat supplies simply means having things in place. So what does that mean? Whether you're baking, cooking frying whatever you're doing in the kitchen you want to have your your um ingredients right if it's a first time recipe you're not really sure you should also have the directions with you so that way you don't skip or or forget to put something in the recipe that's really important to be quite honest if it's on the recipe then all of the ingredients are important okay now if it's something that you already know how to do most of us in the kitchen we're familiar with our stuff, you know. We know what we have. We flex on what we make based upon sometimes what we have in our pantry. But we're doing cookies. So this is specific, right? And I knew I was doing lemon crunch cookies, so there were some specific things I needed to have. I needed to have the ingredients. So the recipe requires three quarter cups of butter. So what does that mean, guys? Well, if you want to look at some of my prior videos where I did a real, uh, some really good content on measurements and more, we talked about what a uh, three-quarter cup would, uh, would as it relates to butter. Okay, so butter, a stick of butter, is consistent is considered a half a cup of butter. Now, when you break down the measurements on a stick of butter, it has eight tablespoons. This particular brand also has the teaspoons on it. Most butter has the tablespoon measurement, but not all of them had a teaspoon measurement. So this is pretty good that it has that. Now, for my recipe, I either need three quarter cups of butter. There's three ways to do this, right? I need three quarter cups of butter or a stick and a half of butter or if one stick of butter is eight tablespoons and one stick of butter 
is equivalent to half a cup, then in order for me to get three quarter cups, I need half one stick of butter and one half stick of butter. Another way of saying that, guys, is that I need 12 tablespoons of butter. Okay? So that's equivalent to three quarter cups of, of butter. So three quarter cups of butter is either 12 tablespoons of butter, is either a stick and a half of butter, or it's three quarter cups of butter. But it's important for you to know a stick a stick is equivalent to one half cup. So if you know that's equivalent to one half cup and you need three quarter cup, you use one stick of butter and then a half of another. Okay? So that's where the math comes in. Like I don't have to know how to do calculus or all those things. But you know, basic math skills is really important. So anywho, get back to the original thing. So the recipe calls for a stick and a half of butter and one cup of granulated sugar now the recipe says two cups of sugar but when you read the directions which is equally important the directions tell you to use one cup of sugar in the recipe and you put the other cup of sugar on the side so being that I've read the ingredients and the directions in advance I already knew to just take out one cup of butter, okay? And that's really important because if I were to add two cups of butter, that would be way too much, all right? Okay, so I put that in the garbage. I'm gonna add another half stick of butter. Remember, we're doing one and a half sticks of butter is equivalent to three quarter cups. So how's everyone doing out there? I don't know about you guys. Now I'm 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 talking from a, a spiritual perspective really quick. I'm you know, I'm I'm a Christian, I believe in God, Jesus Christ, and activity and and the Holy Spirit. Definitely. But this year I don't know with uh it hasn't been hard for me to keep my belief, but it's been a little challenging for me to get in the spirit of Christmas. So one of the things that makes me happy around the holidays, to be honest, is baking. I love getting in the kitchen, making treats. Um, I love showing people how to make treats. And um, it's just a lot of fun. But maybe it's with everything going on, you know, with the virus and stuff like that. But each day I wake up, I'm thankful. I'm happy to be here. And I'm happy to be with y'all today. So, let's get at it. So, now I have my three-quarter cups, and I hope everyone else is doing okay. And if you're not feeling your best, you know, reach out and call somebody or, you know, because we go, we all going through stuff, right? We don't have to do it alone. And I thank you guys for being with me. Now, we already re measured out the butter and one cup sugar. So now, although this is a wet measurement cup, and I use it for liquid, but what I did earlier, I pre-measured a cup using a dry measuring cup. Let me show you. So I took basically I took two half cups and a dry measuring cup, and I just poured it in here. So I didn't do that, you know, I poured it in here because of the size and the volume of the cup. And it just was easier to use. But when I measured out my dry ingredients, I used a dry measuring cup, okay? When you use the stuff like flour, sugar, oats, um, you use a dry measuring cup. This measuring cup is when I'm measuring things like eggs, milk, water, sometimes juice, coffee, liquids. Anything liquid or like chocolate that you want to melt, you use this, okay? All right. So now the recipe says, right, to cream together 
the sugar and the butter. So let's do that. And here's the thing, guys. I love <laughs> using a spatula. I have a lot of spatulas. Because over time, you know, I've baked a few things. <laughs> so I've acquired some spatulas, guys. Here's the thing. You want to make your butter nice and creamy before you add the egg. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the more light and fluffy you cream your butter and sugar together, you get a better baked product. Okay? So if I stop right now, it would be just mixed. But I want it creamy, so I'm going to do it a little more. And it also helps that I left the butter at room temperature. I let it get warm to room temperature. So it's easier for it to get nice and fluffy. And basically what I'm doing is letting the air, you know, get into it. Right? The more I beat it against, and I use the, the bowl to help cream it. Just gravity, right? Just push it against the bowl. Now, when I started out baking, I would, I would whip in the middle. It's before I got a mixer. I do have a mixer, but to be honest, I didn't want to take it out and have to plug it in and all that. A little bit of elbow grease doesn't hurt. So when I first started baking, I would whip, I would, I would um, not whip, this is a, a, a um, spatula. But I would cream my butter and sugar in the middle like this. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but you actually get more traction when you do it against the back of the bowl, guys. So you use that, it's like when you um doing resistance and you're using the weight of your body in a workout kind of like that so you just push the spatula against the back of the bowl and it helps cream it and it saves you from doing all that hard wrist work okay so you let the bowl do, do the work it's coming up nice and fluffy too So what I'm doing right now is I'm stirring this up. I'm creaming the butter and the sugar together. Now I'm going to do this for about another minute or so. And then I'm going to add the egg. So this recipe only requires one egg. Most of my cookie recipes use two. But this one is one. It looks so good. We're not even all the way there yet. This is just creaming the butter and sugar together. Now I'm going to do this for another 30 seconds. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to crack the egg and add the egg. But here's the deal. When you're cracking your eggs, guys, always crack it in a separate container. Just in case the egg may be bad. Because what happens is, if you crack the egg over your, your base recipe, and the egg isn't good, because that could happen, even though it doesn't happen a lot, you ruin the recipe. So you don't want to do that. So it's always good to have an extra bowl or something, just to crack your eggs. Okay? Egg is fine. Let that go. And I'm going to incorporate that into the flour, the, um, I'm sorry guys, the butter and sugar mixture. And you want to make sure you do a really good job of that, right? Because the, the egg is really liquidy. And you want to make sure it's thoroughly incorporated. So this you're going to have to lose, use a bit of elbow grease. Okay. Okay, so this is how it looks right now. See that? Now, give it a couple. 
couple more. What you want to make sure is that the yolk, along with the egg white, is thoroughly incorporated in the sugar and butter mixture. Okay? Before you add anything else, make sure you do that. Okay. <sighs> Over here, it's almost, it's a little after one o'clock. So there may be some folks not up right now. And the only reason why I'm up this late, guys, is because I'm not really that sleepy. And I was looking at the, the Lakers game. <laughs> so this is about thoroughly incorporated, y'all. See, and it doesn't take that long, right? Not that long at all. So now what's next? What do we have to do? Okay. What we have to do is add two tablespoons of corn syrup. Right here. Okay. And it's always good to have measuring spoons. See, these are my... These are my five, my fabulous five. It's a quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon, teaspoon, half a tablespoon, and a tablespoon. I'm telling you guys, it's not that you have to have a lot in the kitchen, but not only is it important to have your ingredients, but it's also important to have the right tools because it'll help you do your job better. Now, I'm not going to pour over the ingredient. The same with the egg. I do the same thing with the corn syrup and all the other add-ons. I do it away from the recipe because I don't want to do too much. And that's especially true when you add leaven and ages like baking soda, baking powder. When I say leaven and ages, that's the stuff that helps the cakes, cookies, um, even pies. Yeah, hold their... Uh, well, it's the sweet potato pie that you use leaven and aging for. Okay? And you don't want to pour too much over your main ingredient because you can't take it out and it ruins your recipe. So certain things you do away from your primary recipe. So this is good. Okay? Now... Right now, it's a sugar cookie, but I add a secret ingredient to make it lemon cookie. And that, my ladies and gentlemen, is pure lemon extract. That's what I use. And it makes a yummy, delicious cookie. Okay, I'm gonna get a small spatula. Small one. So I want to scrape out all of that yumminess in a spoon. Okay. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. So we got all that yumminess out the spoon. We're good to go. Put that over there. And then we're going to add the teaspoon of lemon juice and then mix it all together at the same time. This is a, let me tell you, this is one of the best recipes I've ever, ever, ever done. Um, it's really delicious. It's not a lot of work. Oops. Oopsie, oopsie. I got so excited, guys. Remember to pour the away. Okay. I'm going to add just a pinch more. A little smidge, a little smidge, a little smidge. Okay. Okay. Then I'm going to stir this up. 
guys. It looks so yummy. It smells so good. I wish we had smell a vision in the kitchen. Y'all can smell this. It smells so good. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Look at that. You see that? Mm. Mm -mm. My, my, my. Okay. Now, remember, you got to always make sure you incorporate yeah, your wets really well, okay? So I had to make sure that I thoroughly incorporate the corn syrup. And I'm saying all that stuff. Look at here. We just want to make sure it all gets mixed in here together, okay? That everyone's being friends with each other in the park. They're playing in the park nice together. They're becoming friends, right? Everybody getting along. All those yummy ingredients coming together. Okay. That's good to go. Now, part two are the dry ingredients. So what's the dry ingredients, you say? Well, I'm going to tell you. The dry ingredients consist of two cups of AP flour, that's all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of baking powder. I think I told you all that sometimes um, when you use leavening ages, sometimes you use baking soda, sometimes you use baking powder, Sometimes you use both. In this scenario, we're using one teaspoon of each. So I'm going to get my measuring cup. Now, I'm going to not exactly spoon it because it's not a cake, but I'm not going to heavy dip it out. I'm just going to scoop out lightly enough in here to make it a cup. This is a cup, measuring cup. So remember, this is what you use for your dry ingredients, okay? A dry measuring cup. When I did a lesson on measurements and more, I actually showed the difference between what a cup is equivalent to as far as eight ounces by volume. And two cups of these are equivalent to eight ounces of liquid, okay? So that's why you have to use different cups. And also make sure when you follow your recipes, a cup is not equivalent to eight ounces. If a recipe says you need a cup of flour, that's not eight ounces of flour. It's a cup of flour. This recipe says I need two cups. Okay, so that's one. I'm just going to scoop out some. Another cup. Do y'all know that we are less than two weeks away from the new year? Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. I'm trying to think, am I going to bake something for the new year? I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to bring the new year in with some sorrel tea. Maybe. How y'all gonna spend your new year? Put it in, if you if you're seeing this live, mention it in the comments. And if you see this in the replay, put replay in the comments and then tell me how you're gonna spend your new year. 2020, so almost here. We almost near the end of it, guys. But you know what you know what? We still got bacon to do for 2020. So let's let's get back to the let's get back to what we're doing right now. So I measured out two cups of all-purpose flour. So now I just have to add. Remember, one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. Okay. I like to clean up as I go along, so it's easier that way. Where's my napkin? I had one just so I could wipe my hands. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So the next thing I need is a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of baking powder. This recipe does not require salt. A lot of my cookie recipes require salt, whether it's a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon. But this one, no salt teaspoon 
And remember, you don't do it over it. Just in case you do too much. Okay. So a teaspoon of baking soda and a baking powder and now a teaspoon of baking soda. Because these rest these these things look very similar. So what you want to do is make sure you label your your um your lemonade ages, even your flowers and sugars, because they look very similar. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. So you label it. So I have this label and I left the baking powder in this container. So that way you pour what you're supposed to pour. Okay, guys? So remember, it's a process. Be patient with yourself. This cookie recipe is pretty straightforward. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this little spatula and mix everything in. The dry ingredients, just give it a good little stir. Nothing heavy. But you want to make sure that the ingredients of the, the baking soda and the baking powder are evenly distributed. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> so, now we've mixed in the baking soda and the baking powder. We're good. We also finished with this, and I told you that my counter space is prime real estate. So when I finish with something, it's a good idea to put it away. So that's what I'm going to do. Yay! Now, we're going to add the dry to the wet. Okay? Hey, how y'all doing? So, we're doing the lemon cookie dough. So I already did the wets, and the wets, I creamed the sugar and the butter together. Then I added one egg and made sure it was thoroughly incorporated. Then I added the corn syrup and the lemon extract. Now, guys, we're going to mix this together. So here's the deal. When you're using a bowl that's low. You don't want to mix it hard and fast because you want your ingredients to stay in the bowl. So you just give it a nice little mix around, right? Gently incorporating your flour, your, your dry ingredients rather, because it's flour, baking soda, and baking powder. But you want to gently incorporate it into your cream butter mixture until it's blended enough where you can give it a firm um, blending, okay? Because if you do it fast right away, you have flour spilling out the bowl. We don't want that. We want all that yumminess in the bowl. So you see how it's coming together? Okay, so you just take your time and be patient with it. And you want all that flour to get in there. All of it, okay? Because you want to maximize your efforts. Right? That's why Jason wants us to get on <laughs> YouTube and get our stuff together so we perfect what we're doing. And when you're baking in the kitchen, guys, let me just tell you. You got to be patient with yourself. If you haven't done it for a while or you want to do it and it's something new for you, be patient with the process. Baking cookies, I think, is one of the best ways to get into baking because the recipes are straightforward. You can try recipes like oatmeal raisin, chocolate chip, sugar cookies, lemon crunch. It starts getting more complicated when you do like ginger cookies and stuff like that because there's levels of um, condiments like, you know, uh, I'm drawing a blank, y'all. But like cloves and, and ginger. So when you first start baking, you work with a base recipe that's pretty straightforward. Chocolate chips is a really great one because it's what? It's flour, right? It's baking soda, 
teaspoon of baking soda, teaspoon of salt, flour, sugar, granulated sugar, which is the basic sugar we use in tea and coffee, and brown sugar. You mix it according to the recipe. You cream that with the butter, two sticks of butter, right? And you incorporate the eggs one at a time because you don't want it too wet. You want to incorporate it. So when you start with recipes like that, it helps build your confidence and then it also helps you learn how to focus and pay attention to your ingredients and to your recipes. So you don't want to be overwhelmed. If you're ambitious, another great way to start baking, if you really like it, is doing a, a nice yellow cake. You can either do an old-fashioned cake, a yellow cake, or a white cake. Now, that's a great way to start learning how to bake. Okay? And you, and you don't have to have a whole lot to do it. Now, you notice how it came together? You see, as I was talking, I was stirring, blending the things together. So now what I'm going to do is just take the excess dough off the spatula to make sure I thoroughly incorporate it. Because we want all of that. Okay? So for those who are thinking about baking, and you think it's too hard, I'm here to tell you, it's not. Is it, is it work? Sure, it's a little bit. But it's fun, y'all. telling you. And you know what's good about this? When you're in the kitchen, and you're baking, and you're baking it for yourself or for someone you love and care about, it's just something about knowing you're going to bake something that they're going to really enjoy or something that you're really going to enjoy. Hello, James. Hey there. I got Jason. I got Shauna. James is watching. So, when you're in the kitchen, try to always have a good attitude. And that's really important. Now, see, the dough is done. So, what I'm going to do, because this dough has to set, which is why I made it tonight, because I knew I wasn't going to bake tonight, but the prepping is really important. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in wax paper, then wrap it in foil, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then label it. I already made peanut butter, um, chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> I already made um, chocolate chip cookies um, yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think it was. So today I did the lemon crunch. Now tomorrow morning I'm going to do... These are lemon crunch cookies I made. I made the dough. And so tomorrow I'm going to do oatmeal raisin. And I'm going to do the ginger cookies. Okay? Now it's really important guys to follow instructions. If your recipe says that your cookies have to rest before you put them in the oven. Then that's what you do. Because if you don't follow the instructions, you're not going to get the outcome that you want. But isn't that true with a lot of stuff, right? You got to follow the instructions. That's what makes things work. At least follow the instructions until you know how to move different. So, for instance, this recipe was originally a sugar cookie recipe. But after I baked it for a while, I said, hey, I like lemon. So I want to try it with something different. So I did it with the lemon. Came out great. So much so that now one of the best cookies I make are the lemon crunch cookies. I mean, they are so delicious, y'all. But before I made the lemon crunch cookies, I stuck to the recipe. I made sure I followed the instructions. I let it rest like I was supposed to. I made sure the oven temperature was the right temperature when I put them in. So you got to follow the instructions. Before you want to flex and do something different with your recipes, get your foundation in order. Once you get your foundation in order and you understand what's important as far as your wets and your dries and how much to add, then you can start being creative and have fun with it. Okay? So, right now what I'm going to do, guys is get the wax paper. So actually I'm gonna do the aluminum foil because that's gonna be on the bottom. So the aluminum foil first. Then 
bit of wax paper. And what I'm going to do is just roll it here. And the reason why I put it on the wax paper versus putting it on the um, aluminum foil is because when I take it out the refrigerator to set it up, it comes off the wax paper way better than it would if it was on the aluminum foil. And plus, you want to give it an extra level of protection. Okay. this up. This is how you do it. Okay. Wrapped up. Protected. Final step. Ziploc. Oh, I got one right here. See, I was ready. Be ye ready, guys. Okay. So now all I have to do is put this in the refrigerator and we have made lemon crunch cookies now the instructions say that they have to stay in the refrigerator for at least an hour so they can set up okay but being that i'm going to um do them in the morning i'm not rushing so this is perfect i put them in the refrigerator overnight when i take them out in the morning they'll be ready to go so i wanted to come on and just show you guys how to do lemon crunch cookies and um, then t hmm? okay <laughs> so oh you want your cooking lessons all right here's my commitment to you guys I'll be setting up um, in January cookie lessons and I'm going to be doing two um, every other Saturday. So I'm going to, you know, set that up and, and put the information out so people can sign up. So I'm doing that back office stuff now. Okay. So don't worry. I'm looking forward to having you as one of the students. Okay. So right now, but in the meantime, if you're interested in, um, like basic ba um, baking, if you check, um, my my academy and look under videos i've put up a lot of video content around baking um everything from cookies uh cakes frostings um so if you're interested until the classes start where we'll do more intensive work you can look that up for now okay and you know just pop in when i'm doing my lives i really try to be very thorough and make sure that you get the information you need and if you have any questions you post them and i'll do my level best to answer them okay but when we do the group when i teach it um i give you everything you, you get the recipe the directions all that good stuff um i think my favorite class to teach is the cake I like to do the cake because it's it's a lot of steps, but when people see what they can do with a basic cake recipe and a frosting from scratch, it's amazing. But that's like an advanced class. So for the introductory classes, I really enjoy showing people how to do the different cookies. And then um, biscuits, how to make biscuits. Listen. I'm city born and country raised, so biscuits is, is the jam. My grandma used to make pan bread, right, from scratch. And I make biscuits, and I make the um, buttermilk biscuits. So I love teaching people how to make homemade biscuits because people don't believe they can do it. And it's like, it's not hard. It's just you got to be patient with the process. So I like showing people how to do stuff that they enjoy. I think my favorite classes, um, one of my favorite classes are the biscuits. I really enjoy showing people how to do that. Um, and yeah, you, I know. I love the buttermilk biscuits too. And they're not really hard to make. You just have to follow the instructions and be patient. If you could do those two things, 
then you could do a lot of things in Regina's Baking Academy. I can teach you a lot of things, okay? But you got to be patient. And it's also good to have basic, you know, understanding of your measurements and things. And we go over all of that kind of stuff because it's important, right? So, yeah, I think my favorite class, the beginner's class, is like biscuits, um, cupcakes. Cupcakes are fun. And what's really cool about doing cupcakes is, you know, you may not want a big cake. Maybe a person doesn't want to do cup uh, a cake. Maybe they got kids and they don't want them to have a big old slice, but they want them to have a little cupcake, you know? Well, we I do lessons on cupcakes and frosting. So one of my lessons I like to teach is doing the cupcakes, doing the frosting, and then decorating the cupcakes, especially like with the kids. <laughs> Kids are so creative. It's so exciting. It's a lot of fun. So I, I enjoy I enjoy doing that with the kids. Um, now with the adults, you know, they like to do cookies and um, like old school stuff like biscuits and, and different types of breads. Um, but the advanced classes where we do like cakes. The Oh, thank you. Yeah, man, listen here. I make a Swiss buttercream frosting from scratch. And I got it from Duff Goldman's book called Duff Bakes. And he's the um, owner in, uh, Royal, uh, I think, Royal City Cake or Charm City Cakes. Man, that, that Swiss buttercream is the stuff. Is the stuff. <laughs> the frosting, the frosting. <laughs> Let me put these in the refrigerator, guys. Yes, so, Jason, I, I enjoy teaching, you know, um, I started the academy over the um, summer, around the springtime, and what I thought was really important is, um, you know, moms is at home with the kids, right? And, you know, if you're working at home, you got kids, you got work, Everything's about do this, do that, do this. So this that's not really fun. It's work. But when you're in the kitchen and you're baking and you're doing it with your child or you're doing it by yourself as, you know, your recreation time, you it's fun. You know, it's fun mixing those ingredients together, looking at the oven, knowing you're going to have something come out that's yummy and delicious. So, and I enjoy teaching the mom. So it went from working with, you know, the moms and working with the children. And um, prior to that, I've been teaching um, groups, you know. I work with little little folks and, and teenagers and, and adults. And it's fun. I just really enjoy it. Um, I mean, people enjoy my baked goods, you know. But I think it's important, too, to show you how to do it yourself. I mean, if you don't want to, that's fine. I don't mind that. But I really feel good when I know you know how to do it yourself. And anytime you feel like it, you could go in your kitchen and you could put some flour together with some some uh, salt and, and baking powder or baking soda. Mix together some sugars and, and butter, right? Put your extract in there and you can make whatever you want. If you add milk to that, that's a cake. If you don't add milk to that, it's cookies. It's so much you can do and so much fun you can have. Um, you know, what I didn't share with you guys is that I almost wasn't a baker. I almost didn't do baking because someone I loved and cared about told me that my baking wasn't that good. And if I would have listened to them, I wouldn't be baking right now. So sometimes you got to push past what people think. Don't let that stress you out. You just enjoy the process and do the best you can, and that's what matters, and enjoy it. And you'll get really good over time. I promise you, I did. I can't promise you you'll get good over time if you don't follow the instructions, make sure you have your ingredients together, pay attention to your temperatures. So, you gotta follow instructions. <laughs> so, this has been Regina, from Regina's Baking Academy. And I'm just going to say good night, or rather good morning, because it's 1.36 over here, guys. <laughs> so, 
I'll be checking y'all out tomorrow. I'm going to be baking some more, so I'm going to bring y'all in. And, oh, yeah, Ace of Cakes. I thought it was Charm City Cakes. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Um, so I'm going to bring y'all back tomorrow. I actually um, took off tomorrow um, because I have a few things to do in at home. So baking is one of them, and I'm excited to do it. So I hope y'all take care. Enjoy the rest of y'all evening while I start to enjoy the next day. Yeah, Ace of Cakes is the show. <laughs> so bye for now. Take care. And remember, baking is cool. Be patient with yourself and be patient with each other. Okay? And be patient with the process. All right? And you know what? If you made it to the day, you're the winner. So take care. And I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Good night. Or good morning. Ha, <laughs> ha,